Okay, guys, I'm XDSL, and this is Star Traders again. Now, I say again because those of you that follow my content but not the podcast, so lots of people do that, will know that I have made one long ass video, which was a stream of me playing Star Traders. Um, and then uh, this is this video. So it's like one long video, which was too long for most people that have done this. Now, what I've done a bit of fluff up there that's about, sorry. Um, those of you that follow the podcast as well will probably know that I've spoken endlessly about Star Traders Frontiers. So I'm trying to briefly summarize my thoughts on this game in a way that's going to hopefully help you better understand why I like this game so much. And, and cards on the table here, I really fucking like this game. Now, the developer provided me with a key for this. The developers, I believe I'm saying this right, is the Trees Brothers. I th it's either Trees or Trees. I think it's Trees Brothers. Uh, anyway, yeah, the Trees Brothers um, have made a few games. This they, they, I've played... Um, Templar Battle Force, uh, which is one of their previous games, which is drastically different to this, which is more like top-down XCOM type stuff. Anyway, um, and I've played this one. Now, this game is exceptional on every level because it has systems within systems, and then those systems have got like little baby systems that affect like big systems that you don't even know exist. Um, there is so many things in this game that just constantly come up. Like, I played it for like 10 hours, and I was starting to like lose like the main plot line. I was like, oh, okay. I found a contact system. I was like, I've got all these contacts. And, like, those contacts seem to have like stories of their own. And, and, and the, those stories lead you to more stories. And there's a black market system I found, which I didn't even know was in the game for like 10 hours. Um, every time I dig with this game, every time I play, I come away learning something more about this world. I feel like like the Trees Brothers haven't crafted a game, but like like an entire like universe. I feel like there's more content in this than most MMOs I've played. It is ridiculous. And what I love from it is that while there's a story that, that you follow, um, the storytelling that happens, the story that happens because of the decisions you make and the fights you have are what adds to this game. And it is absolutely wonderful to have a game surprise me and and make me love it so much because i mean i i play a lot of games for the channel and most of the time i play a game and then it takes me between 30 minutes and an hour to go okay i know what this game is now right and the plot might surprise me or it might have a twist at the end or they might add an extra mechanic like as i play through but for the most part my initial thoughts on a game when i'm, I'm like at the point where like, okay, i have thought i've formed thoughts that carries me through to the end of the game but with Star Traders, there is just so much scope. There's so much about the game I don't understand, I don't know. Um, and that's because I've only played like 17 hours. I need to come back in another 17 hours and I might understand it then. I can't even like, I don't even feel qualified to say I understand the basics of this game. And that would usually be a negative. I'd usually go, it's just too convoluted. But the thing is about this one is it's not convoluted. Every system makes sense in the grand scheme of things. And it's not that they're, they're bombarding too much information. It's the opposite. The systems are there. So, like, you discover them as you play. Like, I was like, oh, I need to upgrade my ship. I've got no components left. How do I remove components? Oh, there's, I just buy and it replaces. And, and then that goes down a whole chain then of, like, optimizing your ship. At the same time, you've got to optimize your crew and find the right balance, the right skill sets. But then you've got, like, spying and blockade and patrolling and, like, land exploration. And then you've got this whole thing that you can dry dock your ship and have another ship. Um, there are so many things going on in this game that are wonderfully put together because they're so organic. One thing always leads to the next thing, which leads to the next thing. And I can spend the entire night playing and then I'll be like, oh shit, I've got a mission to do and I have to get back to it. It's such a wonderful experience. And I realize that I've become quite a fanboy of this game and that I'm almost like singing the praises of it. You know, And, and I guess... I guess yeah i guess i really am um i think i think that's because it's really unusual for a game to win me over like this and it's done just a brilliant job now i've now a fanboyed on now for like a, for like a good like five minutes but um it's not all positive the game is not without its flaws for instance uh, in fact let me just get let me just go in here's the game here right here's the game let me just like let's just take you through the opening right and i'll point out likes and dislikes as we go i'm not gonna make a super long video like the last one where i just upload a stream uh, i'll keep this down to another five minutes or so but i'll give you a fresh idea of what i'm talking about here now this is the this is right here i think i've got it turned down too low let's uh, let's turn my play back up so you guys can hear a little bit um this is the the game starting menu now you got pyra explorer bounty hunter smuggler which is called travelers trackers nomads and, and corsair one of the things I didn't realize first off, and this is probably a negative, is that like the ones that it says um, um, prioritizes a ship 
you actually get a larger ship, which makes the game a lot easier to play in the opening bit because you stand a better chance. I have no doubt when I've got like another 20 odd hours logged in this game, I'm probably going to want the contacts way more than I want the upgraded ship because I'll just use the contacts to get an upgraded ship really quickly and I'll, I'll still have the contacts where the ships are quite disposable. But uh, it doesn't really explain that. So the first time I go into the game, I'm like, I don't know. So it turns out like I, the first time I chose uh, Nomad Explorer, which is an Explorer class. Um, and it does say somewhere over here, which uh, uh, Explorer is unparalleled in traveling on the surface of hostile planets. It prioritizes skill and contacts. And you just get up with backstory. But basically, you get more contacts in a shitty ship. And this one here, you get skills and ship. And then here you get XP and ship and then attributes and contacts. But they're diverse, but they are literally starting points. This isn't like an MMO character class you're picking here. This is a starting stance you're picking. And that really wasn't clear to me. Um, that absolutely wasn't clear to me. It should have been because you can make a new template here if you want to. And there's a whole separate thing here for, for prioritizing and doing things and you know adding stuff in. But for now, for most people, I think the uh, the tracker is probably the way to go. Look at that. There's a bug. <laughs> There's a bug right there. One of the few effects. Oh, there you go. Stop now. So I'm gonna now. I'm gonna go. Okay, I'll, I'll be a tracker. It's a, it's a good one to do. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, tracker. Tracker's fine. Uh, and there we go. We got we got these. Now this comes to my next problem. While I like the art in the game, the art is serviceable, but you know it's it's kind of unique looking. But at the same time, this isn't this isn't like a triple A game where all the budget is on the screen. The art it's just stuff here is basic, but very serviceable. Really nice, but, you know, basic. Um, the reason I say basic is because the no limited number of outfits I've got here. Yeah, look, where one, where you go. Keep going back. I've lost the ability to click. See, this brings me back to, to one of the many, many bugs. There you go. Uh, the game is still in early access, and there are things working. If you click too fast on things or in the wrong place, you can, you can basically get it to stop interacting with your mouse. Which is, which is, there you go, if you go too far, he stops interacting with your mouse, no way. Uh, there's a few things like that, and then there's times like that when you'll want to you'll switch back to keyboard shortly. There you go, because I went to the end of the uh, of the list there. <laughs> I went to the end of the list in both directions there. It just stops paying attention. Now, it's been rare that one of these bugs is game-breaking enough that I've had to exit and come back. There you go, I've just had that one there. Launch, we can launch through, it's fine. It's um, it's been rare that it's been game breaking enough because usually the keyboard shortcuts do work. Um, there we go. A year ago, I became a star trader. Du -du -du -du. I've got my. Mu I've just realised I've actually got the music turned off in the game. I'm gonna skip all here because I want to get into the actual game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Skip all again. Skip all again. Skip all again. Let's get to the main game. Um, you should not do that. The plot of this game is exceptional and fascinating and well worth your attention, and you should not skip it. And I don't say that very often because, like, a lot of the time. Like I have the most for the mechanics, not the plot, but this one's actually pretty good and you shouldn't skip it. And um, so on this screen here, it looks barren. It looks huge and barren. You don't realize is this is a lot of the game right here on the screen displayed in front of you. Um, down here, you've got fuel usage. This little bar here is how much you need to make a jump. Um, so if you want to jump between sectors, you'll need to make sure you've got this much fuel at least left. We've got the mission here. And now the mission thing here, the shortcut for this is X. Look, if I hit X on the keyboard, it brings it up. Um, if you leave your mouse over, you might get a put tool tip. You might not. Um, it's just honestly, that's just how it is. Uh, tool tips in the game are like odd to say the least. They're odd and like buggy. Like sometimes you'll leave your mouse over a planet and eventually it'll pop up with like the information and sometimes it won't. Um, oh, I just clicked on that. Okay, I just clicked on that. No, no, get back over this. Stop, stop, stop flying around ship. Um, it is it is one of the things that needs work in the game is the tool tip system. Um, and also... When you're flying around space, as much as you have your contacts list and you know roughly where you're going, it would be nice for these planets to have names that are visible from, from this distance. Or you could maybe put your mouse over the names pop up, like just as floaties or something. Because the sense of place is somewhat lost by the fact that it's a vast, daunting map. Um, and this isn't the whole map of the game, but this is one sector we're in right now. Um, there is there is multiple sectors um, that comprise the galaxy, and each each one of these sectors... Is, is the size of that, which is each one has a planet with its own story and missions. Now, I don't know. I assume this is all the sectors you get in the campaign. However, uh, maybe these branch off to other things. Um, I couldn't tell you because, honestly, I've jumped around like a couple of sectors, but I have explored nowhere near all of this in my actual main game. Yeah, it, it, there's, there's an awful lot going on. 
Um, these connections in between things, the directions, like from here, you can go to here or here, here. You know, the way it's all like skeletal together is is excellent. It's wonderful. Uh, and we have like we have like this here, look, this, the star aliases, which kind of works as a map. It tells you what the import and export. Like, I haven't visited anything of this game, obviously, but uh, the ones you have visited it tells you the imports and the exports and what they like and what they don't like. And then here are all the different things that are available on the planet, which you should get pop-ups for, but you don't always. And we'll close that now. Oh, we'll just hit escape, I guess, because the interface crashed a little bit again. And up here we've got uh, buffs and negative effects and stuff, um, which, which again, you have to... Oh, there you go. You click on it to get to tooltips. There we go. Alert list. Yeah, it's the alert list. Um, it would be nice to have more interactive, interactive pop-ups. But uh, with all the flaws I'm pointing out, there's still so much in this game to like that I can just get past all of that. There you go, the sand. <laughs> now, on this planet here, we have an exploration. We can explore the planet, so the little green flag means. And there'd be like a little circular thing, a little orange circular thing, if there was a mission on this planet. There is not a mission on this planet. Once we're in orbit around the planet, we can go patrol, which is literally a card game at this point. Um, I'm gonna turn, I've just realized my, it's very loud for me. I've just realized that quite a bit. Um, we can like if we so if I hit patrol now, it's gonna pick these cards are gonna basically all fade away one by one in random order. If a green one is left, that's basically a perk. That is something mostly positive. Um and if a red one comes, that's mostly negative. I say mostly because if you just want to like blow shit up is what your your personal objective is here. A bounty hunter ship might be great for you. <laughs> might be great for you. Or you might come across a military ship, but you don't have the rank to be patrolling this area and that might open fire. Not necessarily amazing. Um, we've got a blockade here where the idea is you're blockading space, stopping people getting by and, you know, and, and trying to get a benefit that way. Or we can spy, which is just a case of getting intel. Spying, for the most part, seems to be uh, skewed in favour of the negative cards and not the positive cards. Um, but there's certain things you can do to add buttons here, like cards that let you re-roll things. The active skills appear here in this area. Um, this interface on its own... You could, I really believe you could spin this system out into a whole game on its own. Like these these patrol blockade and spy thing. I feel like that literally could be an entire game. Like genuinely. I, I, you'd have to add a few more bits to it, a few more interactivities. But yeah, I think you can have an interesting card game just on these systems alone. Um, yeah, which but then you've got the uh, orbit menu where you land. And let's land on a planet and we'll see. And we'll land on this planet here. And we've got plot. Let's skip that again. We don't really want to. Oh, okay. We'll just, we'll just keep doing this. We'll just keep doing this. Skip all. There you go. There we go. And we get on this planet here now. We would usually read the plot. But I, I, I'll be honest, after playing so much of it now, I really don't want to give people spoilers. Um, Callaghan here, you can go, we should discuss further work. We should know in details. We should ask for court missions. You can ask for the court missions. Now, you reach a certain point where it comes with three cards. Like, you want political mission. You want, like, a haulage mission. Yeah, di different depending on the context of the story. Um, and then we have uh, promote rank. So we can ask for a promote. We can pay for a promotion as well um, to get up in ranks, which allows us to be better affiliated with the military, from what I understand. So when we're doing the blanks, when we're doing the patrols, our, our usefulness is accepted a little bit easier, a little bit more. Um, and you can also get a trade permit to trade illegal substances. The trading on, like, again, the trading on its own could be a whole system. Like uh, if we go to this, if we click on the exchange here. Ah, uh, oh, no, we've just come across another one. Okay. <laughs> So we're going to go on the exchange. There you go. That, there you go. The interface didn't work in that work. We're going out and in. And we can go sell cargo. Or we can buy cargo. We can view the demand. These are the things they want. And what's permit restricted. Do you want to need that permit? And then uh, that populates a list. So if we go into this planetarium. Planetarium. Star Atlas. There we go. It tells you what they do and don't want. And obviously we can go down here and see all the different planets. So this one wants this shit. So it sells this shit and wants this shit. This one sells, and, and then what? So you can obviously look at this a little bit of napkin math, sort of figure out what who wants what, and find yourself a nice little route. Or if your mission that you get from uh, talking to this fella, if you accept a mission here, it might be taking you somewhere. You can go. Where am I now? Where am I going? Okay, I'm going there. So if I don't stop, I'll 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 be able to sell this stuff over there. Again, that could be an entire system in itself. The thing about this game is every single piece of the game could be an entire system. Now, explain the interface a bit more because I've just realized I've got sidetracking a terrible job. You've always at the top of the screen got two pieces of information. You've got your captain's health and your ship's health. Hull versus health, basically. Um, that is important because if you've got, if you've got a grand mission and your captain dies, it's kind of over, you know? So this is a bad thing. And if your ship gets blown up, also a bad thing for various reasons. Um, and so that's important that you keep an eye on this information, which is nice. This is the, your affiliated uh, faction, probably the right word. And then uh, this, this little bubble here is like the danger level. So 
and name the planet and stuff. And down here, this little flashing dot here means I've got a notification, which means that some people have got promotions. So I can hit here and go leveling. These people have got promotions. So let's click on this one. I mean, you've got jobs and talents. So he currently is a, a level three bounty hunter, but he's a commanding officer. He's a captain of the ship. He should probably have command as well. So I can train job and he has these things now. He has both of these things now, but I can, I've also got another points train job, so I'll train him some more in that one. And we can decide then what we do and where we put these points. There's no guidance. There's no right or wrong. And if I, if I decide stupidly that, hey, he should have all the jobs, I could I could do that. Like, literally, I could. he wants to be a doctor as well. In my experience, it's better give. I like to give everyone two jobs, like a ship job and then like a combat job. And then like have them have them like level up them. So if I need more of one, I, I focus on one. Um, well, so in this particular one, we're going to focus and get up to level two in command. Then traits here, skill saves are wonderful. Skill save gives you an automatic pass on a certain thing. Um, and this cooldown here means that once I use that skill save, it's then three weeks in this case before I can use it again. And obviously, the passage of time in space travel is quite a factor. Yeah, pretty cool. Obviously, it requires rank one in command, which is why we gave him the command straight away. Um, because without the commander, we just had bounty hunter, so it would have been stuff that's not that useful, really, for, for command. Aura of command automatically passes a failed command test in any situation. See, that's so useful, so we just learn that straight away. That's learned. Yeah, we've got two points unspent. So I will always go for these skill saves because they're automatic passes. This one is unwavering attention. Automatically passes. Failed intimidate test. See, there you go. Yay. I assume there's dice rolls going in the background. It's how it works this out. And then this one here, for instance, is a ship-based skill. So having this on, having this character on my ship with this stuff, it unlocks this skill if I choose it. Which is in this one, I can use the blood game. Um, a ship in combat allows a boarding attempt at any range during the mission. Really useful. Or uh, this one here is a ground combat, which is what the little sword means. But then if I'm in ground combat, this happens if this character's with me. Um, so I find the ship ones are the ones I tend to go for. Because even though I find myself doing a lot of ground combat... I find as I play, I find they naturally sort of, every now and again I'll throw a point in, but their natural leveling curve kind of helps with that. But uh, it probably makes more sense to say this contextually if you know the game. And we can also equip uh, equip stuff and change stuff, and that's a whole system. I haven't even, I haven't even dipped into the system of like changing gear and stuff. Um, it's the next thing on my list of things to learn with this game, because there's so much. But yeah, the theory is you, you give them better weapons, better equipment. And they are better killy people. You can dismiss them. It's not closed window. This dismisses the member of crew. Uh, we can get to the next member of crew if we want. And again, jobs and traits. Uh, in itself, again, all of it is just such massive, massive systems. Now we've got full crew status, crew by traits. Yeah, it's, it's pretty it, It's pretty in depth there. And all of this, uh, the last, what, 17 minutes, is just me rambling and not even playing the game. <laughs> you know, just rambling. There's so much to do. Uh, down here as well, we've got a. Uh, this is this is your contacts menu. Is it crashed again? Is it is it add little stall again? No, it hasn't added add little stall again. There you go. So this is the pre this is the one on my main game. I've 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 gone all out on this dude and uh, oh and the other woman with his face I saw earlier. I've got this for like hundred and sixty or something. Um, but with this one, I can I can go if I want to, if I want to go and talk to this person. I can go okay. We'll uh, set a waypoint and then we'll navigate. So if you want, you can basically ignore the entire plot and just do trading, or just be a bounty hunter. There is absolutely no reason you can't do any of that. The game is so full. Uh, this is um, definitely one of the most finely crafted games I've ever encountered. Um, the UI needs massive work. I mean, like it is daunting. Even though it's like, now I'm used to it, it seems quite reasonable. It is actually daunting how much stuff is going on with this UI for you at first. Um, the pop-ups are a pain in the backside. They, they, they're not reliable. They're not, they should be like instant. As soon as I put a mouse there, I'll like, have a key so I can hold down shift and all the pop-ups come. Do something, guys, because I really feel like, especially in your first few hours, like, what do these symbols mean? Like, like, I've just clicked on it, you know? Like, what do these symbols mean? I, just just give me something, but there's no, there's no pop-ups here. I'm sure they're supposed to be. I know they're supposed to be. I've seen them. Um, I don't have them more than I have them, though, which is weird. Um... Like then these things here, like like what are, what are they? What are these menus? Just let me mouse over them and see a pop instantly. The pop-ups, like I say, they do appear. They are known to appear. <laughs> it's just sketchy. But even when they do appear, I just feel like there's not enough like contextual stuff on them. Um, and the planet names would really give me a sense of place. Like, like okay, I know this planet. I've been to this planet before. I can see this planet. The names will be start remembered. Now, granted, when you go to the actual, when you actually go to the planet, um, in in the planet menu here. 
you get the name and you get the the, the size of the planet you can go to and stuff um so this can sink in but i just think that if it was on the space menu or there was a way to hold any shift or something to, to show it i just think that'd be much more interesting a lot more easier to give you a sense of place these little holes here are warp points you can click on a warp point you'll warp places um one of the mechanics as well that uh, is interesting is you run out of fuel halfway because you can see if you'll go down quite quick um if you run out of fuel before you get somewhere it starts taking your crew's health um the reason it does that is because you use water fuel um like water is fuel so if you're out of fuel your crew don't get to drink which is why they start having ill health um and that's the, that's, the, that's the other one thing i didn't even mention um you have this spice hall mechanics where you can hear rumors about other worlds you can find recruits you have to pay wages paying wages causes a level up you've got a doctor who you have to pay to keep your crew healthy regularly um if your doctor fails uh fails tests as you're flying around the world and then you've got starport which is you buy fuel there you can get repairs um you get upgrades uh, which is the whole system here is quite daunting as well um basically i've spent like 20 minutes now um just talking about this game uh, in the hopes that i can contextualize the amounts of moving parts and how thrilling it is to be in this world and seeing this world uh, because even if they stop developing it right now i still think this is one of the finest games i've ever played it's one of the finest crafted games i've ever played um but it is still in early access they're giving like content updates like weekly and their content updates seem to be like more content than most games have like seriously some of the content updates they're like holy shit there's a lot of stuff in there this is a fantastic game it is absolutely wonderful to play and it can only get better all they've got to do is keep adding content don't change anything just make pop-ups and make the ui work you know refine things but even if they don't eat outright add anything more than a couple of planets or whatever at this point it's still an amazing game and i have no doubt they've got a discord the trees brothers have got a discord uh, that i joined upon joining there like super friendly straight away there's a whole active community and they seem to really care about their games they do really seem to be wanting to add stuff they even said when i went in that there was a comment about um about the amount of content I was like yeah we've got a lot more planned it's like they've got a lot more planned in a game that i find daunting <laughs> absolutely daunting um even down to as i said the artwork is i feel kind of basic i mean the, the, this menu system's okay but i feel especially when you're on the ground combat with people in fact i can probably initialize that right now actually uh, there you go. Just go back to that play. There you go. I can feel like I can initialize that. No, there's no, there's no figure here. Let's see if I can. Uh, oh, and that was me clicking the wrong button again. No, that was the middle mouse button because I am an idiot. Uh, the other play had a yeah a ground thing there. Look, that's the little thing for ground thing. I'll show you the ground mouse combat. Hopefully, you'll get a, you'll get an idea of what I mean. So if I land here and I explore, very this is the exploration. This is grand place exploration into the card game, and we did well. I'm hoping I was hoping to show grand combat. We'll just keep repeating to get grand combat. I'm sure it'll be fine. Oh, God damn it. Yeah, this is uh, another time when the uh, the menu has crashed. I have to go back in now again because I clicked around too quick. <laughs> Not ideal. <laughs> Not ideal. Oh, man. I'm... I just want to show the grand combat. I just want to show the grand combat. There's no more. I've done the whole planet. The whole planet's done. There's, 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 there's nothing else to explore down here. But I tried, you know. But uh, my point is the grand combat, while the graphics are, while the artwork, actually, the graphics, it's all 2D stuff. So the artwork's probably more accurate. The artwork is very serviceable, very visually clear. I'd like some more variety. I'd like to see people from the same faction dress similar. That'd be a nice touch. So you go, oh, those are soldiers. Those are dressed as soldiers. But as it is, I, I went into a level because of the, the random nature of the way the bad guys are generated. Bad guys, the enemies are generating. There was an enemy on the other team that looked exactly the same as one of the dudes on my team. And I was like, oh, Bob, you've defected. <laughs> it's just a bit weird. But yeah, I'd like, there's a few things I'd like to see. I'm guessing it'd be hard for them to contextualize like uniforms and stuff because you know of the way like you don't know who you're fighting and, and who's the good guys who's the bad guys because the story depth but um yeah man look 24 minutes in i'm still babbling i'm gonna stop babbling now for your benefit as well as mine suffice to say star traders is an exceptional game i will absolutely be playing a lot more of it and i will do another update video when i feel capable of being a bit more refined about my compliments or negatives about the game um but I think I'll wait till there's a lot more content in and I'm more familiar with it because it's just so much. I mean, this is like someone trying to explain Civ in a 20-minute video. You know, there's there's just too much game there to even explain. Um, but yeah, Star Traders is absolutely wonderful. Star Traders Frontiers, that is. There's a Star Traders 4X as well. This is the previous game. 
I, I've played it on mobile. I assume it's the same version as the PC version. Um, this game is is far superior. This is a this is a damn masterpiece. The one's just a good game. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. I've been HexDSL. Don't forget to check out Star Trade as well. Let me know what you think of the things I've shown you here because it's not all been good. I mean, the UI I showed it not working properly like a few times. Um, do let me know what you guys think of this game. What you, if you guys are going to pick it up or if you like Hex. You've been babbling for like half hour. Shut up, man. This is, that's what we're doing now. Don't forget, you can check out xpenguin.club for the X Penguin podcast, RSS feed and stuff. And I stream at the moment Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. Uh, I'm not being able to make Wednesdays because of lifestyle stuff. But thank you very much for watching. This has been Hex. It's been an epic ramble about a game I absolutely love. And that's really why I make this channel. Thanks for watching. Bye.